Hi, what I've got today is this Hamag HM303-6 35 mega oscilloscope. It was donated to me because it was damaged in transit or it was bought uh, but the seller on eBay just shipped it in a plastic bag and of course it got smashed to pieces. Now the guy that donated it to me has already done some repairs like bashing the dents out of the case. There's some damage to with the BNC connectors here. Um, I've tried powering the scope on, it does power on. You can do the relays click when you're out of the range controls. Uh, but there's no trace on the screen. I've taken the cover off, downloaded the service manual for it. Uh, you can get a very comprehensive service manual from Hamig, which is now Rodent's Wars. Very good manual that's troubleshooting steps. Unfortunately, it's just board swaps. And there seems to be several revisions of the board because the service manual and schematic, the PCBs are different to the ones that's in mine. Uh, they've all got revision numbers on, so I presume, like this one for example, revision 2.3, that's a time based board, which is slightly different to the one that's in the service manual, but all the connections are the same. Um, so, what I did first of all was obviously check for internal damage. Make sure the CRT isn't broken, it doesn't appear to be broken. Um, there's nothing bent inside. All the chips are in the sockets. Uh, and I've done some preliminary checks on the power supply voltages on this pin and this connector here, according to the service manual. Um, and all those voltages are fine. The other thing I can't check is the high voltage to the CRT, the 2000 volts, because I haven't got a high voltage probe. So that is on the back there. So see so if you can see that. Now the power supply is different on this one to what's listed in the service manual. And the one the schematic is different again, but yeah, they're all HM303 6s. So um, obviously the voltages are the same. So I suspect with this scope, there's no high voltage. So I took the power supply board out, found a couple of dry joints, resoldered them, and I've put it all back together. Um, Reseated all the connections, check for any broken components, and I'll uh, switch it on and see if it works. So I really want to try and save this scope because it's not that old. It dates from about 2005, looking at the date codes on the chips. It's a 1999 model, so it must be the last ones that were manufactured. So there's no screen burn on the tube. Um, not looking bad, Nick. So, considering it would have shipped in a plastic bag. Now, why anyone would do that? I have no idea, but it's a fairly modern construction. No surface mount chips, apart from a few. Uh, but yeah, I think what I'll do now is I'll uh, power it on and see if it works. And uh, nothing. So you can do the... It does be working, it's just... No. No trace. Sensitive up full. All the pots, uh, all the controls are in the cow position. As per the manual, you just feel the indent. There's absolutely no display. And I think there's no high voltage there. This is the fault in the deflection circuit, so what I'm going to do is check the put an input signal to it and see if there's an input to the deflection board. Okay, so I've had to skip a few things in this troubleshooting manual because this scope appears to have a different CRT to what's shown in the service manual and it's telling you to short some pins together on the back of the tube. Uh, now mine's different, pinouts can put it different, so I've skipped that step. Uh, and I'm now on to this step here where it tells you to work at identified connector J2003 and YP bar, that's that one. It tells you to short the two half the pins together, or you can just pull it out. If you pull it out, you should get a trace, but it'll be unfocused. 
Hmm, okay, well, that's something we can do. Uh, right, it's pulled out. Turn it on. Hmm. Oh, it's working. Right. Okay, turn it off. So that proves that the high voltage is okay. The CRT is okay. So what does this mean here then? So if the trace is visible, which it is, continue with 3213. Replace the YP board. Yeah. So that would indicate that the fault is on this board here. I did actually measure voltages on there, there was nothing coming out of it, so it would appear, yeah, that's what the issue is. It's a fault on this YP board, so we'll have to investigate that. Now I think I've found the issue. You move the Y position knobs, obviously this goes upside down. If you look up there, a bit difficult to catch up camera. It was working. No, I just turned the intensity down, haven't I? Let's have a look. If you look there, you can just see it's just off the edge of the screen there. Look, it's been deflected off the edge of the screen. That's what the issue is. There's always a fault on the uh, wide deflection board. Right, okay, yeah, so they, they are visible, they're just offset. Mm. So just before I go fucking around on that TV board, I'll show the two outer poles of that connect together, that connector together, should I say. Like it says in the manual here, and the trace is not visible. However, it is if you pull that connector out. So that would imply that them two pull shorted, and it doesn't do anything. The next step on the thing is 3214, which is replace the XY board. Right, so that would indicate the fault is on this board. The deflection board. Um, so I think it's time to go poking around on there and see what we can find. Now, what I have noticed, there was a smell of something getting very hot. These resistors here, these two are still cold, but these two get red hot. What those are, are the circuit for one of the deflection points. And obviously it looks like it's been deflected toward, deflected towards the bottom, so I would suspect there's a short circuit in the final amplifier stage. Possibly with that transistor. So, I think what I'm going to do, can't really get it on the tripod, I'm going to go poking around in there and see what I can find. Okay, finally getting somewhere now with this, these two output amplifiers. It's 146 volts on one of the plates, and which doesn't vary if we alter the tr the vertical position. On this other side of it, there's 85 volts there, which varies between 100 volts and 20 volts depending on the Y position. So this side of the circuit is working, and this side has failed. The side with the resistors that get hot is working, and it's ones that are still cold that's a problem. Now I can't, I've been through all these components here and they're all fine. Transistors check out okay as well, but the voltage on the base and the emitter is the same as the working circuit. Uh, the only logical thing I can think of is that transistors failed. So I'm going to order up a pair of those transistors, replace them and see what happens. Right, we've got it working, finally. All it was, uh, turn it off first. Uh, all it was, was that transistor there. One of its legs had broken off right on the 
body of the transistor I managed to remove it uh, and solder it on and now it's working that's all, literally all it was for some reason I'm sure that should be screwed to the chassis uh, but yeah all it was was um, one of the legs of the transistor had broken off so I think we've got working scope now yep yeah, it's all working Both chests work. Bit of noise on the. There we go. It works. Just wants a bit of uh, testing to make sure it's all accurate, but. Got a working scope there. Cool.